there's a story there. I, I'm much the same. But there's a cautionary tale. I, my partner back in mid to 2000s had a business selling satellite boxes. And because of that, he would keep bringing new ones in and forget to program them so I could find the channels that we watch, which was basically the terrestrial ones and a few extras. Um, there was a lot of pulled on them as well. And because of that, I got out the habit of watching telly because when I did want to sit down, I had to... Oh, God. A bit long, but hang on, because I think it's worth it. I stopped watching television in about 2005, 2006 for no other reason than my partner was working with satellite systems, kept bringing in weird satellite boxes to get stuff from satellites. I could never operate them. It was a pain in the ass. There was so much porn on them. And I just, I just, it was more trouble than it's worth. So I stopped. And about six to eight months later, I went with a friend of mine to watch what I think was the first Sex and the City movie. And we went to Salisbury and we watched it and it was really good fun. We both enjoyed it. And we came out and had to go to Boots. And when we went into Boots, there was this big display of cosmetics. And I just knew, I was drawn to them. I really wanted them all. They were so pretty. And I just knew that if I bought them, my life would be amazing and I would be wonderful and glamorous and beautiful. And it was such an alien thought, and it really was. It was like a little gremlin was sat on my shoulder that I actually stopped. Like, Where the hell did that come from? And of course, I realised it was because the film was just one big product placement and I had fallen for it. And then I realised I was talking to a friend of mine who worked in advertising at the time. And he said, look, all advertising works the same way. It tells you that you are shit. Everything about your life is shit. You know, you're ugly, you're old, you can't cook, your house smells, your car's rubbish, all that. And then it offers you a solution to one of those problems. And he said, the problem with advertising is that we are very good at remembering the message that we're fat, old, ugly, useless. Not so good at remembering the solution. And he said, and in any case, it's never found in a product. And because I live rurally, I didn't ever see much advertising. I didn't buy magazines because I wasn't, you know, I don't, they were expensive and I couldn't really afford them. And I'm not interested. And therefore, from, from one month's end to the next, I virtually never saw advertising. And I found that I was much happier. I really was. And watching the telly just made me feel rubbish. And it, it still does. I avoid it if I can. I also avoid magazines. I bought that the other day. I was looking at them in the shop. I bought that. And like I said, it's probably two magazines a year I buy. And I was browsing through it. And it made me feel like shit. Because I didn't have all these beautiful clothes and those houses were lovely and my, wasn't my house like that? Look at that dog, wasn't it gorgeous? And Oh God, my hair. And I get that with telly. I get that when I watch the Jilly Cooper that I love, Rivals. I've actually, I mean, I will finish it, but slowly. Because it's all so beautiful and I'm not. And it's <coughs> but when I read, and I read the, the word on the page, I don't have the same images in my head as they give me there. And I can come out of it, understand that it was a lovely daydream, get back to my real life, and I don't feel like crap. So, something to realise, and it's, it happens to you with Instagram, it will happen to you with this. It's why I'm so absolutely vigilant on saying, stop believing this crap that you see online. People, it's not real, it's a curated fantasy. But if you let it, it will get into your head and it will make you very, very unhappy.